Justin Trudeau's controversial decision to decriminalize hard drugs in British Columbia, including dangerous substances like fentanyl, heroin, and crystal meth, serious concerns have emerged regarding the consequences of this policy shift. Should the government be held accountable for the surge in overdose deaths and the growing boldness of drug pushers in our communities following the implementation of this law? Are law enforcement agencies being left powerless to combat the widespread use and distribution of these harmful substances, further exacerbating the crisis? And now, with a judge ruling against scaling back the law to exclude child playgrounds and parks, are we witnessing a dangerous precedent that puts our most vulnerable populations at risk? Also, take a minute to visit our website, sign the petition demanding Justin Trudeau leave the office immediately, and sign up for our newsletters to get uncensored news in Canadian politics. Trudeau's drug decriminalization experiment in British Columbia has been met with widespread criticism and concern as overdose deaths continue to soar and communities grapple with the devastating consequences of illicit drug use. Despite promises of harm reduction, the reality on the ground paints a grim picture of increased drug-related fatalities and emboldened drug pushers operating with impunity. Law enforcement agencies find themselves handcuffed, unable to effectively combat the proliferation of dangerous substances across every facet of society. Conservatives are advocating for a different approach, one that prioritizes public safety and invests in meaningful solutions to address the root causes of addiction. Rather than perpetuating the failed safe supply fallacy, conservatives aim to ban hard drugs outright sending a clear message that illicit substances have no place in our communities. Conservatives propose redirecting investments into detox and recovery programs, providing much-needed support for individuals struggling with addiction to overcome their dependency and rebuild their lives. By taking decisive action to tackle the drug crisis head-on, conservatives seek to protect Canadian families and restore hope to those affected by addiction. In response to inquiries about the Trudeau government's handling of British Columbia's request to reverse the decriminalization of hard drugs, Minister of Mental Health and Addictions Yara Sachs faced scrutiny regarding the absence of a clear timeline for review and decision-making. In response to questions about British Columbia's request to reverse the decriminalization of hard drugs, Minister of Mental Health and Addictions Yara Sachs stated that a decision had been made indicating that the request was under review by Health Canada. However, when pressed for further details, Minister Sachs and Health Minister provided vague responses failing to specify a deadline or timeline for the review process. Despite the urgency expressed by British Columbia, the ministers reiterated that the matter was still under review, without providing any concrete information on when a decision could be expected. As the review process continues, it remains imperative for Minister Sachs and Health Canada to prioritize the urgency of the situation in British Columbia and expedite their decision-making process. The longer delays persist, the greater the risk to public health and safety, Instead of offering a concrete plan of action or outlining specific steps to address the urgent situation in British Columbia, Minister Sachs appeared to deflect from the issue at hand, leaving many Canadians frustrated and disillusioned with the government's approach to drug policy. When questioned about the opposition's claims regarding the possibility of further decriminalizing hard drugs, Minister Yara Sachs reiterated the government's focus on viewing substance use as a health issue rather than a criminal one. She emphasized that the current priority was reviewing British Columbia's request with the intention of preventing the recriminalization of individuals in need of health care. However, the response did not directly address whether the government was considering further decriminalization beyond the existing policies. Instead, it reiterated the government's stance on treating drug use as a health issue. This leaves room for interpretation regarding potential future actions regarding drug policy. When pressed about potential public backlash against the drug decriminalization policy, Minister Yara Sachs maintained that the government views substance use as a matter of public health and safety rather than solely a matter of public opinion. She emphasized the government's commitment to advancing policies based on this perspective, indicating a determination to continue moving forward with their approach to drug decriminalization. However, the response did not directly address concerns about potential public dissatisfaction or opposition to the policy. Instead, it reaffirmed the government's stance on addressing substance use as a health and safety issue. In a recent press conference, Minister Yara Sachs offered vague responses regarding the federal government's response to British Columbia's request to reverse the decriminalization of hard drugs. Despite meeting with BC, for officials in receiving the request, Sachs provided little clarity on the timeline or specifics of the review process. When pressed about the possibility of granting further exemptions for drug decriminalization in other jurisdictions, Sachs reiterated the government's commitment to addressing substance use as a health crisis, sidestepping questions about the potential expansion of decriminalization efforts. Moreover, Sachs failed to address concerns raised by BC about the escalating public use of drugs, opting instead to reiterate the government's reliance on a suite of tools approach without acknowledging the shortcomings or failures of the decriminalization policy. It's evident that Minister Sachs' handling of the decriminalization issue leaves much to be desired, raising doubts about her effectiveness in managing critical public health challenges. It's clear that Justin Trudeau's reckless drug experiment has failed miserably, 
leading to devastating consequences for communities across Canada. That's why Pierre Poilievre and the common sense conservatives and their commitment to ending this dangerous policy once and for all. By banning hard drugs, stopping taxpayer-funded drugs, and redirecting those resources into much-needed detox and recovery programs, Poilievre offers a sensible and compassionate approach to addressing the drug crisis. Trudeau's reckless drug policy has had catastrophic consequences for British Columbia, leading to an alarming surge in overdose deaths. Pierre Poilievre's statement in Parliament, citing a staggering 380% increase in overdose deaths following Trudeau's decriminalization of hard drugs like crack and heroin, underscores the severity of the situation. By allowing the open use of dangerous substances in hospitals, transit buses, coffee shops, and even parks where children play, Trudeau's policies have put countless lives at risk. The fact that 2,500 individuals lost their lives in the year following the implementation of these extreme measures is a tragic testament to their failure. Poilievre's commitment to reversing Trudeau's disastrous drug policy and implementing effective measures to address addiction and save lives is exactly what our country needs. Trudeau's approach to drug policy has been nothing short of disastrous for Canada. His reckless decision to decriminalize hard drugs has led to their consumption in places like hospitals and community centers where they pose a serious risk to public safety. Even more concerning is the disturbing trend of free drugs being distributed only to end up in the hands of vulnerable youth. This irresponsible practice has contributed to the proliferation of drug use among Canada's youth population with devastating consequences. Tragically, under Trudeau's watch, the country has witnessed a staggering number of overdose deaths, with the death toll reaching a shocking 42,000 and continuing to climb. It's clear that Trudeau's misguided policies are failing Canadians and putting lives at risk. It's time for real leadership that prioritizes the safety and well-being of our communities over reckless experimentation. Canadians deserve better than Trudeau's dangerous agenda. Trudeau's decision to decriminalize hard drugs, including dangerous substances like fentanyl, heroin, and crystal meth, has had far-reaching and devastating consequences. Instead of reducing harm as promised, the policy has led to a surge in overdose deaths and emboldened drug pushers, who now operate with impunity in our communities. The tragic reality is that since the implementation of this policy, overdose deaths in British Columbia alone have skyrocketed by a staggering 380%. Families and communities are being torn apart by the loss of loved ones, and the situation only continues to worsen. What's particularly concerning is the widespread consumption of hard drugs in places like hospitals, transit buses, coffee shops, and even parks where children play. The normalization of drug use in these settings not only poses a serious risk to public health, but also undermines the safety and well-being of our communities. Furthermore, the distribution of free drugs, which then find their way into the hands of vulnerable youth, has only exacerbated the problem. Instead of receiving the help and support they need, these young individuals are being exposed to harmful substances that can have lifelong consequences. Trudeau's failure to address the root causes of addiction and prioritize effective solutions has only compounded the crisis. His approach to drug policy has been characterized by recklessness and negligence, putting the lives of Canadians at risk. What are your thoughts on the recent surge in overdose deaths in British Columbia following Justin Trudeau's decision to decriminalize hard drugs? Do you support Pierre Poliver's proposal to ban hard drugs, stop taxpayer-funded drugs, and redirect resources into detox and recovery programs? Share your perspectives on these pressing issues in the comment section below. For more insightful videos and updates, subscribe to Scoop Canada.